Read this book. Hello, I love you. You are free to not read this book. Hello, I love you. You are free to not read this book. Hello, I love you. You are free to not read this book. Hello, I love you. You are free to not read this book. Hello, I love you. You are free to not read this book. Hello, I love you. The book I wrote is titled, The Book of Humankind. It is written by, me, someone who cared enough to try. You are free to not read this book. Disclaimer. First edit based on feedback October, 2018. Original 2015. Warning 1. This book may contain strong language, a bunch of theoretical blabber that may cause nausea. Blasphemy, mind fucks. This book is appropriate for every human, aged able to read and think, so don't show your dog. Contains paradoxical and hypothetical conclusions and most importantly, share this message with your dog. Warning 2, if you did not see the first sentence of my book, have a quick look right now. Warning 3. All online references except one have been moved from this text to the final chapter for your reading or listening experience. To view the available media sources directly visit www.worldpeacestartswithyou.wordpress.com To read this book for free, clearly, what do you think? Yup, also on that website. Note that some sources have been permanently removed from the web. I can't afford to invest a lot of time replacing those constantly. The final chapter has some lists but even those are incomplete, work in progress I guess. There are so many ha hi ha hi ha hi. Also, the online voice you hear is provided by the free version of some online tool. As it makes errors in reading every sentence, this recording might be more confusing than you actually reading the text online. I plan to one day make my own recording, but for now you will have to do with this. Warning for, yup a new one. I really can't write well, just a heads up. End of disclaimer. Chapter 1, Hello World. Hello, I am a human. I wrote this book for you. Why? You might ask. Well that is pretty obvious else you wouldn't be reading this fucking book huh? Don't mind my swearing, and if you do, fuck you. Now I am just kidding, but in a way I am not. Ha ha. Jokes on you cause you're still reading. Why do I persist in joking around? Because I believe anything should be allowed to be ridiculed. Even you. Humor is a gift, not a weapon. If you choose to not receive it, then don't. Freedom of speech. You must have heard of it. Ari 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 the book is turning into a weird twist. Time for key info. Even though I try to be transparent, the quirkiness of my character lends me these foolish words. And this leaves a dried up cryptic residue which vaguely resembles my true intentions. Now let me explain more carefully, my dearest reader. I wrote this book for humanity. For world peace, harmony, serenity and mutual respect. Then how could I have tried to insult you on purpose? Because looking at all perspectives is the most honest way of defining reality. There are people on this planet who do not mind swearing. Letting you experience the harmlessness in which those people use the swear words, you can't really say. There is any harm done. Whenever I decide on morals, I always evaluate the hypothetical perspectives before concluding. This is important if you want to be honest. Only then will you have nuanced and defined your own morals. To conclude what is just and what isn't. In this perspective, join me through the rest of this book. Sometimes the only way is a combination of many ways. Honesty, happiness and truth. Honesty, harmony, peace and happiness are all derivatives of freedom. Honesty is a direct derivative of freedom. And just so you know you have the freedom to know the truth about many things. Not telling the truth is in some way robbing someone else's freedom to know the truth. Some consequences are severe, and otherwise some are not. 
Changing perspectives on these hypothetical extremes, it can be evaluated universally. Transparency should be the base of human communication. A way to describe it. If you selectively decide to not look at something, or listen to a person, you're acting on free will. You choose to ignore. If you see the society isn't transparent, but you choose to ignore it. You're not standing up for injustice. The same values as you are benefiting from are being taken away from someone else. The collective freedom will be and remain imbalanced. In the case of physical peace, when you use violence you rob someone else's freedom of being unharmed. Harmony derivatives from peace. A peaceful society is in spiritual harmony. Spiritual happiness is a derivative from harmony. Being in harmony with all makes you happy. It is our job as the human race to create a good society in which we can search and find spiritual happiness. Something to drink, sad human. Have something to drink, I am having a plain mint tea if you're asking. You would if you could. That is a realistic human answer. Cause you do know there are people on this planet who don't have access to clean drinking water. A bare essential aspect of life is a struggle for survival. If this is the first time you hear about this you must have been living in a cave. I am observing the world around me thinking about what true purpose has been discovered in life. And in today's world, when I look around, I see unhappy people. A glimpse of fear when a stranger looks into my eyes. Strangers are easily intimidated by strangers. The fear of the unknown makes people do weird stuff. I experience the fear of the unknown. Yet aren't we nothing less or more than each other? Simple dots, on a bigger dot, surrounded by dots surrounded by more dots until infinity. Humans, on Earth, in our solar system, in the maze of the universe. All children born from the same starlight. And who knows what other complexity is part of our existence. Science may sketch a vague area which may solve some of our questions, problems and issues. Yet science is also subject to laws which have to be discovered rather than formed afterwards. These laws are as they have been and shall remain, perhaps until forgotten and rediscovered, perhaps until final laws which govern the others are discovered. Yet common sense and pure intentions have been blinded by rogue values, fake values. Values we have been engulfed with through our own history and our global interactions of the recent past. Values made up of mind images we created during our lifetimes which cloud the silent voice from within. Either blinded by financial priorities or victim of clouded judgmental propaganda, people fight evil with evil. All crises on our world are created by ourselves. We are destroying rather than constructing. I wrote this book because I believe that in this world, too many people are not free. Too many people are being fed with hatred. Too many people fear unnecessarily. Too many people are hungry or thirsty. Too many people die from undercare and neglect. Too many people do not experience any form of general safety. Literally cultural, national, financial and most religious societies are destroying themselves. By attempting to destroy others. Yet we know these facts are happening. We have become infected with surrogate distress, misleading fears, lies. We suffer an affliction caused by the illusion we live in. Why? Take the main lines of any religious institute, no. Take any government, any corporation or other system which regulates our behavior today. Look at it. It shows love and compassion. Truthfulness and just causes. It shows how to build. It shows how to continue, how to evaluate, how to exchange values. It sketches an image of how humans can interact with each other. Pretty much each specific category I just mentioned has these basic principles in its core. The only flaw in its practice is made by entirely institutionalizing it. The abuse of respect, trust and truthfulness. The claim for holding truth out of protection. Giving up freedom to hold security over your own living conditions. 
having your time consumed working for a pay which you use to live the rest of your life. We have made systems that are created on linear beliefs. Institutes are afraid of change as they have fought so hard to maintain these positions. In their beliefs this is the most efficient way of assuring continuation of the system. By natural formation they are not so eager to change themselves over time. And being influenced by those institutions we dare not question the systems that exist and how they may be improved. Changing their system for the better is mostly seen as an impossibility by the institutions themselves. And these opinions are mirrored by our own civilization. Because over time systems do change, we can see our history repeating itself. Ideas have been thought before, and so have the systems been changed according to the opinions formed about those ideas. We have had many occurrences of conflict through belief and opinion, guided by our own institutes. Over the course of history we assumed to have someone else take our beliefs about these systems without discussing them. For according to me, the truth can only be revealed by continuous, mutual and universal evaluation. Following this perspective, nowadays we practically lie to each other. Because we're having our beliefs under-evaluated universally through discussion and recognition of universal truth. Currently this is also true in the world we live in. Beliefs are being smashed on each other, and by natural consequence the mind gives us nothing more than chaos. We are feeling uncertain because we cannot evaluate the chaos without coordinating it. By nature also, the mind is chaotic. The mind questions this chaos. And only if the mind believes, it is just so because it has evaluated itself and its chaos throughout time. A non-evaluated mind can therefore never have beliefs which are formed in spiritual freedom. If you are prevented to believe, you have had never the chance to also evaluate these beliefs. Your spiritual involvement in any belief can then never be pure and evaluated. Coming to this point, the mind cannot deny certain facts. There are obvious facts such as that the earth has a lot of water on it. Or that we are all human. You, reader, you are human. So there are also emotions we can all feel. Such as love, hate, envy, etc. Coming in a conflict of beliefs we can even feel compassion with our moral enemies, which we comfortingly muffle. Though seeing someone suffer from famine always triggers compassion. Seeing abuse of any kind triggers compassion. We are seeing destruction all around us but few care to show more human responses. We are a social being. Seeing a murder happening without knowing what belief system the victim holds, or without any other information about the origins of the victim, our mind naturally triggers compassion. Facts which I may have repeated too often throughout this book. And that is why I am convinced that altogether, we can solve us. We are all so different and in other ways so enormously identical. And it is the freedom to be different which allows us to search for what is truly identical. And so, we can construct, we can build, we can harmonize eternally. We can clean the planet. We can push scientific development. We can help solve the hardest and shared problems we are facing. We can share knowledge, we can create the first ever world economy based on peaceful trade. Just assuming this is the consequence of world peace, a true golden age of man will emerge. Now you've read enough to say to yourself, I am not going to continue reading this idealistic crap. It is similar to the other utopian scripts I've rested my eyes upon. Well frankly I challenge you to deny that you hold ideals of yourself. And if you now do realize that those ideals of your own exist, where do you stand on all this? You do not want to think about these things. You do not care for what we do in our lifetime. You leave the thinking to other generations. Our documented history is not impactful enough for your life. You would not want to impact the world that comes after you. You would not want the world in the future to be freer. Your freedoms that you supposedly should already possess and the ones you don't. How many times in your life did you do things you did not want to do, just because institutes of power have forced you to? 
the institutes on which you can have a direct influence, as you are part of them. If you stop reading, it is all right. I do not judge you for it or like you less for it. And in fact if you take a pause, this book will stay available for free. And if you ever happen to change your perspective on what you want to think about, maybe this will give you the necessary time to analyze subjects by yourself, with your own eyes and reasoning. And let us say you have come to a point where you understand what I say, but you still quite disagree with me. Fine I have peace with that, let us agree to disagree on those subjects. And let us look at the subjects on which we can agree to. I am trying to build something, not destroy. I want you to be a part of it, and I am sure you too can contribute to a peaceful line of thought. I want to show you good because I am bound to learn good from you. But beware, as everybody knows good, all mankind knows evil equally well. This book is not implying that it speaks of absolute truth. I did mention it in the disclaimer, but here is some elaboration. The book does try to show you that truth can never come to light without the right mindset. You can't teach an old dog new tricks I was told. The nice part about it all is that the book does not describe new tricks. In the contrary, it gives you some insights about what you already know. Ancient lines of thought that have been thought before. The original intentions of religion. The original interpretations of morals and values. They have been thought, by you, by me, by anyone. These are values which are universally felt but not practiced. And sometimes practiced but in contrast with the dominant cultural values that exist at the time. These are idealists we have known through documented history. Inspirations to many, fools to others. And this can be thought of anyone, and it can be expressed by anyone. There is no copyright on opinion. There is no unique possession of ideas. And additionally, I would like to emphasize that I am not trying to convince you of some holiness or any kind of religion. Neither the other. Like you, I have no physical proof there is any direct sign of God in today's world. We don't have pictures of God and the other religious artifacts. Even pictures would be doubtful as of today's technologies. I don't intend to brainwash you with atheist beliefs. There are people very active already trying to do that such as Sam Harris, and many others. What I do intend you to realize is that belief is based on morals and values. And being convinced that these values will apply to yourself and your own reasoning. If you don't act and reason with your own beliefs, then how can you claim to hold them? Only beliefs which are based on your truth can be completely tested and verified, and looped infinitely in your mind. As upon verification they will give their resounding tune for you to remember. When there remains but a splinter of doubt on your own beliefs, you will live a miserable life blaming others for the misery you cause to yourself. Equal trade for dummies. When I look around, walking on the street in the Western Hemisphere, I see unhappy people. The economic crisis is something created by mankind. Now how can you claim that I have no proof of it, while the only economic crisis is among humans? I've been dying to travel more than I could until now, but I am sure there are still pure places on Earth where civilizations have bolstered their socio-economic structure into a balance between humans and nature. If we act together and synchronize our monetary systems, during the never-ending phase of world peace, trade can finally become equal. Looking at that possibility, what if we removed currency? Material is defined by purpose and purpose defines value. Services are nothing more than things you want to be done. Broken roof. Have to get it fixed if you want to stay dry. Why would it cost 200 of currency x more in this place of the world than somewhere else? Doesn't everybody want at least one roof? The deniers wage destructive wars and build weapons. The concept of equal trade without currency not possible. Trollololol I challenge you to disprove me. And for any philosophy geeks out there, really the argumentum ad ignorantium is a knife that cuts in both ways, many times through this book. Smiley face. Have you ever pondered that saying something is impossible is, actually you excluding all possibilities. 
not even the chance that the slightest circumstance can change for the better. A gate opens. Or a door. Or. What other symbolism can I name here? A portal. The mere fact that is so unthinkable in your presumable future can be a fact in the future. Never assume you are right when you do not have tangible proof. These are facts we do find in our observable universe. Humans had a point in history in which they ridiculed the thought of a round world, and not flat. Humans had a point in history in which they ridiculed the thought of the sun being the center of our planetary system. Humans had a point in history in which they ridiculed the thought of flying, space travel, etc. And to you who are still saying that achieving world peace is impossible, you are arrogant enough to think that we, united as a human race, cannot deal with world problems. Or you simply state we can never unite under one roof to improve our own existence here on Earth. Yet we're able to turn into mindless producing slaves of a refined economic system generating advanced weapons, massive destruction and never-ending war. Crisis and conflict rob you of your ability to influence the world around you. You feel paralyzed by the cloud of judgment, the taboo, and the fear. Being good is more difficult than being bad and you prefer the option with least effort required. You're indifferent enough to think that bad things are not necessarily bad unless they affect you. Like electricity only exists when you see it powering something. You need to see that even good people can do bad things, but regardless of the results or intended results you can never commit to bad. Only good behavior can carry on in the future. It is not the end which justifies the means. It is the end which is the result of the means. If the end needs to result in peace, our means should also cause it. Many of us are frantically looking for a moral compass in this new world, though not as many of us might admit that. Violence and bad behavior do not cause peace. They eliminate free existence of other good behavior. Or did you really think that people who ever were caught by our systems never did any good? Therefore, I see forgiving as the only possible outcome of any conflict. As the forgiving enables society to build in harmony. And revenge, considered as the bad outweigh for conflict, leads to another revenge impulse being triggered. This cycle will continue until the parties involved in conflict resolve their differences. According to conventional, school taught, history, we grew to hate each other for power, land, bloodlines and religion. Today's world revolves around these. If you want to change the world, you need to change the influence of those branches in society. This is how you change the world. Be the power. We can organize our society and its influences. Be the land. We can take care of the land we live in. Be the bloodlines. We can allow our families to flourish and live freely. Be the religion. We allow our line of thought to inspire peace. The people who say obtaining peace is impossible, they are often still engaging in war and destruction. Then please explain to me why are there marks and myths about the time before. Stories crafted to warn and also to inspire. To mark realistic accounts of what could, have, happen, ed just stories. Then why would anyone put an effort in transmitting these stories worldwide if it would not serve a spiritual or political or social or moral or biological gain? Why are these stories about Babylon, Atlantis, and many other ancient tales written down? We all had the same splendid and wildly thought of main plot that we wanted to share in our region. About the Great Flood for example. We do not have concluding proof of our history, but from the history we can rely on there isn't much clarity until now. We are being trained to be skeptical to everything that doesn't have any proof. My book may have some truth in it, it may have not. I am just sharing my point of view. I could be wrong, but when I put the pieces together from other authors, scientists, historians, myths, legends, religious documents, this is what I get. I have read some truly remarkable books and analyzed the works of some interesting artists though. They'll probably be found in reference now or in the future so don't worry. 
Don't be too asked to Google them, it will lead you to what I meant you to read in the first place. For your reference, it is not the school book that refers to only one discovery or key point in history that creates your own illusion of knowledge. The Western school books you've most probably been educated with, have been filtered. Not so you can easily see facts summarized, but just that this summary lacks otherwise truthful details. Excluding truth. The Smithsonian Institution is responsible for this as this was so intended upon its creation. Not only are we not always aware of with which intentions, and from which perspective the lines of a story are shared. What is more detestable are the many hidden secret technological and scientifically patents, and means for improvement that are kept from us. Truth these days is not heard, simply because, we're trained to not believe it. Call yourself the president and be the terrorist. That is what is happening right now. Having bleeding eyes watching through the barbed wire we installed ourselves, clenching our hands around metal poles with poop filigree. Media blow up against each other before the actual explosions in warfare come down. Warfare is not waged with its original motivation. If the major government's capabilities of warfare would be this predictable, then I advise them to read Sun Tzu's The Art of Warfare, to start with. Though I am not pro-war, the act of war on itself is, to destroy. The only means of destruction should be to defend the human race from extinction. I doubt this should ever happen and even if it should happen if it is truly that horrible. Though I do not doubt that either way we should not sit like indifferent ducks in the pond of life. How can you openly show, in this age, that as a country you agree to world peace? Dismantle, destroy, and recycle your weapons of mass destruction. Show that you are truly not intending to harm. In my opinion, violence has never seemed to bring a solution that leaves everyone and everything in harmony. The one war scarred the other, and vice versa. Even to this day, ancient rivalries just as New Age rivalries pester our world. So world peace. Achieving it must be a difficult task. The only way of all benefiting equally is to organize it on a world scale. In fact, if anyone does not have the freedom to be part of it, it is not really world peace. The only way for world peace is if we all agree to exchange equal values. My goat may be worth a chicken for me. So I'll trade it for a chicken. It is basic, and flawless because you decide to trade or not. We're using computers, and calculators and doing all this number crushing. Nowadays we are constantly calculating our financial reality. Will I have to move out of my house because I cannot longer pay for the mortgage? Just because a computer says so, and the deficit created by percentages crushes down on the lower earning rings of society. The function of humans in society no longer serve the benefit of all. The government, banks and royal bloodlines decide what is going to happen. Well we're human aren't we? The people that decide make errors just as any other human does. That is why we are not fail-proof in our current monetary debt system of unequal trade. It is not give and take. It is give and receive. When you loan, you ask them to give you something. The other party may wish something in return. But this is where the shit hits the fan. This inclined promise can be broken. This results into conflict. When you agree to give something, give it. Don't ask in return. If the other detects your needs when they are present, they will be able to help you too when you need it. Trust and transparency are the base principles of giving and receiving. Trust and transparency result from truth and harmony. It serves necessity for the society rather than greed of a possible individual. Going back to old philosophies like the lines of Ubuntu, I do think I am not too far off with describing a comparable economic value system. Another example then. Reader, if you're a farmer. For example you run a hardware store. Or you're a farmer, it doesn't matter. The point is, you have a lot of materials available for quote-unquote output. Yet, the current economic crisis prevents people from getting to your wares. 
Therefore you lack money, which you can't spend to get other wares. And now you don't have money to invest in making more money and you are miserably stuck in debt. Again, this is so basic that I don't need to explain any further. In general, how would that benefit us? Well, more bang for your buck so to speak. You will be able to live in the agreeable comfort anyone else can, exchanging the values we determine individually. Values are free, in a free market. So, theoretically, you could agree, in person, to trade one kilogram of iron, element Fe, for a new bike. A very basic example. Overpricing you would say. Well maybe it is what it is of value to you. These are items we should then work and care for, if only for their usage and not necessarily solely its ownership. With our current system of having a currency, the idea is pretty similar. If we would apply it to our current system, it would mean we need a material equivalent that we can produce to exchange for the currency at all times. Pretty much like it was before the year 1905 when the value of currency was permanently linked to a value in metal, silver, gold. Naturally, sharing is also an option, if it happens based on free will. Observe nature and, re, discover free will. This brings me to the most basic rule of the universe. Everything has a free will and reality. A snail that decides to crawl right on your path in a dark alley, or a dog just shears before your front wheels. You technically kill the other being, not on purpose. In this case, both the dog and the snail were unable to communicate with you or vice versa. And without knowledge about each other. It happened without processing reality in such a matter that you could influence it for the benefit of the world. You would have saved its life if you could, but by error. Not recognizing the reality around you, you accidentally stepped on the snail or road killed the dog. Ah. Uh. Let me step off the explaining phase. I am out for world peace and I've put all my thoughts, experiences and blessings for the human race in this tiny little book. I am as a human, part of nature. You can look at me as if I am a dog. Please do. From now reader, when you think of me, I am a dog. Woof. Unfortunately I am a human, or I am lucky, it doesn't add much to what I eventually had to say. I hope I explained the intent of goodwill and love for all creatures well enough, and hope you recognize your similarities in it. There isn't much else I expect from this little book. When you look through your own eyes you will see both good and evil. Then it is up to you to be what others will see. Oh yeah, also imagine I am a smiling dog right now. Wink wink. Chapter 2 Speeding Up Thought Kind of. So this is the point where I will blabber some more. But I just want to congratulate you that you've made it to the second chapter. Explanation of this chapter, think with me, don't just read. If I speed up too much, when you're completely clueless about what you should think of this. Maybe it is a time for you to stop and think about, and evaluate the previous lines I've written. All I can say is that it is really difficult to write a coherent book on humankind, and how we can coexist. And if that doesn't help you right now, maybe you should try and read some books from the references. It is alright if you take a pause, this book will stay available for free. Educate yourself with your own eyes, and when you have come to a point where you understand what I say, yet you disagree with me. Fine, let us agree to disagree on those subjects and look at the subjects on which we can agree to. I am trying to build something, not destroy. I want you to be a part of it, so when you are able contribute to. The peaceful line of thought. Again I am not trying to convince you of some holiness or any kind of religion. Neither the other. I have no proof there is no God, yet I encourage you to accept we're all humans. Fact. I am wishing you peace, harmony, serenity and respect in your life. Well I just blessed you, and I am merely mortal. As you must have read previously, I am just sharing my human thoughts, experiences and blessings for the human race. A blessing. It's based on a religion. Ha. Huh. I beg to differ. 
Look at the initial spiritual interpretation of a blessing. Isn't it as good as it can get for religious people, being blessed by your God? Eternally. Wow, even something would exist such as a heaven, wallala, blah blah blah, you name it. Even though I respect all good values of current religions, they all seem incapable of communicating peacefully across the globe. So we gave the little unknowing a name, worldwide. What I interpret of religion is that it is the spiritual guidance that needs to resonate with us. The focus on our afterlife. And next to that focus, there is wonderful wisdom embedded in each and every religion. Guided by the spiritual meaning to interpret the all. To understand our existence. To give meaning to life in the past, the present and the future. So coming back to delusion, not all religions are designed solely for guidance, and not all religions are interpreted through guidance. Some are designed as law and vice versa. And most are surrounded by people who claim to understand their law better or interpret it true from a direct testimony from God. This is of course hard to verify, and would for me point to pseudo-religion. To me true religion has nothing to do with the fanatics that make the contrasts within humanity so strong. But when you fall for guidance to a wrong path, and stand to enforce their laws, it enables justified conflict when, religious, laws are in conflict with what is just. Particularly stances on equality, traditions, translations and race as much as claims of ownership of certain cities on our earth. Before I go on, I would like to make a difference between Satan worshippers and followers of religions or faith. Though the faith part is the same, Satanists are worshippers of the angel. It is not about a god, but an angel. Seeing that angels are created by gods in all scriptures. They inherently also believe that the same god that created the devil angel Satan, is the creator of all. Coming to this, worshippers seeking spiritual guidance by Satan within our society are often associated with theories about cults living among us. Those are theories about the establishment of Freemasons and Illuminati who are active in every gear of society. And so these cults want to achieve their goal of a complete controlled society which they can control from their own effortless. They are labeled as conspiracy theory, and are often ridiculed. But to the public, pagan and satanic forward slash occult symbolism are actually pretty common when you know how to recognize them. Compare for example the White House in the United States of America with the Dome in the Vatican. And uncountable more signs are very obvious in our society's architecture. In the same light you can observe the similarity for the symbolism, legends, and aphorisms shared in Genesis and the Sumerian story of the Anunnaki. I do not encourage you to become paranoid and believe these perspectives on these observations. There are many other interpretations of reality and consciousness of that reality. For example the movie The Matrix. 1999, also offers you a different perspective of what our lives could mean. The belief in a God however, I do encourage, as long as it helps you be a better person and make you happier. As I can't he prove God exists, he may as well exist. I prefer to live piously, but that is just speaking for and from my own intentions. Worshipping the Creator can in that perspective never be a bad thing. I enormously enjoy people around me who appreciate our shared existence of all time. Knowing that the most recent theories in science, the so-called opposite of religion, about string theory suggest an awful lot. In short, string theory has come to the conclusion there are 11 dimensions. As having our consciousness in the 3D world. We can observe all 2D dimensions. So knowing dimensions are interlocked. The fourth dimension will be able to observe all 3D dimensions. The fourth dimension is eternal and always, at all places at the same time. Exactly the description of what you would hear from religious testaments about the afterlife. So I am implying we just do not know enough about our own existence to say that we know what the deal is. We do not know if there is a creator of everything, but in the same time it can be an explanation. As if everything would have always existed, all that exists is just so coincidentally occurring that we exist. Fine, if you assume that, 
then how would you explain the outcomes of string theory? Exactly in the same manner that our concept of time is only experienced by 3D conscious creatures. So in that perspective, there was a start of this eternity as it exists in the 4D world. And so also stated in religion in multiple passages these are the main points of mystery, not stressed enough by science. Like what artifacts and scriptures we find from history and archaeology by what they mean, not by how they can be measured. Oh yeah, and I can stop right here as there would be seven more dimensions we can barely get a clue of. How would you begin to explain what a fifth dimension conscious energy would be? And in religion certain portals to heaven and hell have been described with not so much detail. Though in a similar way wormholes can be thought to be possible. So I am not saying religion or science is bad. I do state that there are doubts to the authenticity of religious scriptures and their translations. And that we cannot rely on current non-empirical measurements in science. To me it seems that the three main conflicting and hate-practicing religions through media, Jewish, Christian and Muslim, are so strongly similar that they are all three reflecting a mirror of truth. This kind of interpretation is child play when comparing still largely unknown texts and scriptures of languages which we currently have no verified and sensible translations of. Texts and scriptures found from a long time ago such as the mysterious Voynich manuscript, which recently has been partly translated from Old Turkish. As all can be interpreted from all perspectives, none of the stories is less true, as far as our physical and tangible proof reaches it is also not less false. Evaluating what I understand from these three main religions, they are for the largest part identical. Therefore, I cannot accept choosing only one above the others as they all seem equally true to me. What the institutes of the religions have recorded as interpretation of those books however, are the most conflicting values. Values interpreted from man, which have been rewritten on several occasions. In the case of Christianity, there is loss of meaning through translation, censorship forward slash editing. This leaves us with question marks upon its authenticity. For example what about the lost gospels? Can it then be accepted as the true godly values, the right interpretation? Is the message of the Bible complete when it is purposely shortened? Why is it taboo to refer to the translation drafting that monks did? Wouldn't it be plausible that translations can be left out because there were no people that knew for sure? It would be stupid to teach people things which have been possibly been lost in translation. But why wouldn't they then tell us that? As for the Quran, it is written by the followers of Muhammad. Who, by account of how this allegedly happened, himself could not read or write, and was instructed and led by verses straight from God himself. When reciting and chanting these verses have been kept in decent shape of Surah S. So that the literate followers finally wrote them down. The point however is that we cannot verify if these occurrences were the true cause of the construction of the Surah S. As much as we cannot rely on the Christian or Jewish records or the Muslim. And to clarify, I try to express doubt, not necessarily disbelief. What is left? There are some opportunities to offer a window for growth of perspective. If you are Muslim for example, you can refer to the part where I can challenge the authenticity by writing my own surah. Quran, Al-Baqarah the Cow Part Goose 1. I'll put a quote down now but feel free to read the Quran it is a beautiful book. And if you are in doubt about what we have sent down upon our servant, Muhammad, then produce a surah. Then produce a surah like thereof and call upon your witnesses other than Allah, if you should be truthful. We do not abrogate a verse or cause it to be forgotten except what we bring forth, one better than it or similar to it. Do you not know that Allah is over all things competent? Now I do not necessarily claim my writing to be comparable with the crafty writing style of a surah. I do make an effort to re-say what is of value as we can learn from our ancestors and their views worldwide. So let us just make some assumptions. For when I assume all is false and all is true, I also believe that there is some righteous creator. It seems as a possible solution to the existence of all, and to nuance it, not necessarily limited to this solution. 
The reason why religion is so specifically mentioned and my thoughts on it are mirrored here on its institutions and their interpretations, is because I believe it is the most ignored subject today, globally. We do hear and read about it, and we discuss it with our peers. But do we really try to change the face of our earth for the better, using these institutions of democracy? Or you only vouch for your own people, which you think to know to be the true believers? I do not encourage you to pick or reject a belief just because I wrote about it. It is just a window of perspective some people on this planet have. I do encourage you to accept we are all humans, regardless of what we believe. And that the good in any religion can also be found in the other. These are the points in which we can say that we are identical, as humans. Other than this data or about religion, I am just sharing my human thoughts, experiences and blessings for the human race. And I would like to emphasize whatever I wrote can never be of any godly influence. This is pure human power, as is obviously demonstrated by my poor writing style. I want to allow you to form your perspective on peace with your own morals and values, so you may be blessed with insights some of which which are blessed feats of your psychical nature and others which have condensed on you while forming, education. And purely explaining my intentions, shall we look at the initial spiritual interpretation of a blessing. So we gave our morals different names around the world. Blessings exist everywhere, even among non-religious people. You simply wish someone the best, and hope for his prosperity or hers. So something like, Live long and prosper. Vulcan Geek Alert. As my book will be not excluded from ridicule and skepticism, I try to generalize that what cannot be generalized, freedom of the mind and body. Freedom of the will. I even encourage people to ridicule it if this makes them intrinsically happy, I wouldn't even have the slightest feeling of discomfort from it. Though I can imagine that the true source of their happiness would not be able to be fueled for a very long time. The entire purpose of freedom is to enable society to be diverse. It allows you to be diverse. And without making this realization that my intention is to not describe a new city of the sun, Civitas Solis, but rather a healing of what is the earth we live on and the minds that experience it from now onward. A diverse society has the optimal potential to develop in meaning and come up with the most diverse creations. As I am convinced what is true today may not be truth tomorrow. Society will change over time. The necessities will be different as the considered global standards of aesthetics, comfort and luxury. And what will remain true over time, is that we will need to communicate and evaluate in order to live together in peace. Though I am not here to convince you of some religion or how good they are for you. I do see truly in all religion, the commonly shared good and bad morals we value as godly or occult demonic features. And simultaneously, all religion focuses on what is our goal and where we originate from. In my opinion not a bad shot at finding the true meaning of life speaking solely about the philosophical background of those religions. Just as those religions, all other theories and studies, to me in particular, are true, unless disproven. Why is this the frame of thought? As we can only disprove untruths, the truth can only be formed upon collected disproven opposites. Disproving something requires hypotheses and data, facts. Based on data the hypotheses are confirmed or disproven. Cause is the reason why effect exists, and so we can discuss about the data, facts, and conclude. It is only when the lens is invented which we use to look on the smallest scale to our world that we realize that even then when we can see the smallest parts of quantum physics, we can still not describe the force that makes those parts shake in a particular fashion. And from where this force originates. If every theory is true to me, everything is also wrong. Unless the incorrectness is disproven logically. As we are currently in relationship to each other, culturally, emotionally, socially, economically, you name it. There is a huge gap in what truth holds today, because all information we have about our past is contradictory or inconclusive and consistent. Truth these days is hidden by time-consuming illusions. 
you couldn't even find time to go and find out about truth yourself. If TV does not show you, you do not see. Social media has played a part, on the other side there is the deep web. I see no point into discussing with each other which religion is the true religion. Taking the point of perspective that God exists, how angry will he be that you harmed other people because they didn't he believe in God? Taking reference from the corresponding books, the wrath of God to sinful people is quite horrifying and otherwise simply disturbing. So by forcing other people to believe you, what is even explained in the Quran and the two Bibles, Jewish and Christian, is that God knows there are non-believers. You are harming another human which God also equally created. And therefore you sin. Having wars about faith is in this perspective, really pissing off God. Specifically instructed as a sin, killing is in the top 10 sins of any religion. Taking a detour from religion, the theories about Illuminati and the Freemasons also, like the religious theories, suggest a one-world order is secretly being formed. Under the false premise of peace, as described in the Quran and the Bible, the devil will rise in form of the Antichrist. This is the moment on which society will know mass extinction, also known as the Great Culling and the Apocalypse will fill the world with pain. Only true believers will be granted salvation from the reappearance of godly presence here. In this sense are true believers a peaceful people, and not violent. So even if you pursue true worship of your God, even in presence of the Antichrist, you remain respectful and peaceful. These are truly enlightened human beings as they see the consequence of violence can never lead to peaceful continuation. Knowing that God is with them along the way, here and in the afterlife. They should have nothing to fear either. Dying honorably along the side of God, by his will, you shall meet him and rejoice. So there is absolutely no point in discussing any other arguments before these discrepancies can be verified and discussed. Corporatism, another theory, enforces the trend in society that is caused by globalization. Corporate world starts to control us not only economically but also politically. Politics which determine healthcare and other social benefits that ought to be managed by ourselves, the government. So the arrival of peace will not necessarily make me happy, because I do not know how it is formed. This is why I try to make a collective effort of us all to take peace into control, before it is done for us. Peace should be obtained by us all, and not for us all. Peace should not be granted but should be called out globally. Peace should be directly practiced. It is something we commonly decide, and we should make ourselves heard about the importance of the control of it. Or do you like being controlled? It's okay if you do, but then let yourself be controlled by yourself. Your own thoughts determine what you can evaluate, so being controlled by yourself requires you to analyze your environment forward slash input. This will come to you once you are being controlled in your disadvantage. For then you feel that something has been decided for you, against your will to choose. Some of us have never experienced that, some others have known nothing else than being controlled against our will. However, the religions have passed on more good than bad in our minds. The features we value, and which have been passed on as ideals are no less true for non-religious people. These are features we can all possess. Depending on how good you intend to live your life or if you choose to be good, there are some features you could strive for or already possess. Be good to each another. Love. Live spiritually as you are also physically alive. Free will goes as far as the free will of another human or being. Let there be hope. Create and contribute to continuation through transparent truth. Guide your creations into godly features. Even the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali lead to certain simple instructions for reaching the spiritual guidance and enlightenment we need as humans. As these features also come back in the religions referring to the God of Abraham, to Vishnu, Ishtar and all the other possible names for the one God who is the maker of all. This is what religions are originally intended for by the prophets and godlike humans we have come to know these days, in all societies. Morals and values to guide a society into peace and serenity. Heroes are people who resonate with godly features. 
You stand up for an injustice for instance. Villains, bad guys, evil, whatever you name it, are the opposite. The heroic stories never mention a protagonist who is a terrible rapist, or a cold murderer, or a merchant forcing local, or global, farmers to cut their prices. The only conflicts that exist today is the misinterpretation of those stories. That's why today's religions are not appropriate any longer for this world emerging internationally. Ouch, let me rephrase that for I do not intend to lie. Today's religious institutes are all focusing too narrow on their independent interpretations, which is preventing other religions from being identified and evaluated as identical. There is organized confusion of what we can interpret from each other, exactly because of our institutes trying to keep themselves upright in conflict with each other. Seen directly for example in the Palestinian and Israeli conflict. And the irony of it is that both the Torah and the Quran state you shouldn't quarrel over territory nor take lives over it, or falsely profit from it. This way we might not ever be able to obtain peace unless through horrible conflict. The largest powers will most naturally collide, as is taught to be the nature of man. And to the opposite of this rivalry. I know and I also agree that there is a large majority of humans who practice their religion as true and peaceful believers. People who do not want to harm people of different religions or non-believers. They have interpreted the religion by its peaceful core. The issue however, is how we deal with it, is that the instances that officially claim to represent a religion, are in conflict. The day that the Vatican Pope, the Imam and the Jewish head rabbi and the Dalai Lama hold a press conference announcing peaceful unity. There is still no guarantee that other-minded people will agree to world peace just so. Presumably, but I would like to see a different kind of peace. Peace that benefits all humans and not just a lucky few who chose the right God to worship. As there can only be one creator of all, even just hypothetically if nothing was before the creation, and for conventional science there can only be one singularity responsible for the being of all. So to have peace for all, coming from us, even if it were the parts of the all that not recognize our existence to be the consequence of the singularity. We must unconditionally accept the uniqueness of each other, countries and international relations, but also as much individuals in relation to each other. Peace in which we can believe peacefully. The true following can come when faith is chosen because it is most evaluated in your mind. If God exists, he will have wanted us to reunite. And if we consider the apocalypse as commonly described, then do you want to be a true follower of faith? or one of the many who burn for their sins. Coming close to not committing to sin yourself, your focus should not be on other humans and their faith. If God does not exist, and religion is a fabrication of man to guide society, is it not stupid to deny the good values of religion? Either way, you can be good or bad regardless of your moral beliefs. That is why we have to be more united with our own society so that spiritual and physical injustice can be universally reviewed in equality and transparent honesty. Talking about dominance. Since mankind searches dominance over one another, conflict is natural. Most of the world's dominant religions nowadays, with exclusion of the flying spaghetti monster, are based on one core story. It originates from the Sumerian tablets. Authentic Sumerian clay tablets I have referenced or will reference a few times. I am not saying that, this is true and that I am convinced that those tablets are truly recording historical facts. I am merely interpreting the meaning written in it, if it were to be the real source of truth after all. Just as you're trying to interpret this book, I just shared my thoughts about interpreting this story of the Sumerians. Which of these interpretations has ever been right, tries to dominate your mental space with their perspective. It is up to you to become a sovereign mind, one which determines its own truth. Who knows I am sharing some truth with you, even if it is just a little. I am evaluating it into my perspective to evaluate what's true. Done on the subject for now, moving on. Injustice and retaliation. If you're going to read this book, Seriously. I mean you're still reading. Are you also still thinking? 
You must have seen something somewhere what resonated with you. That is a psychological fact by the way. This might be a moment to discuss this with your significant others. How do they interpret what is written? How do they think about what I wrote? What do you think what I wrote? Have you taken the time to analyze the sources I have given you? Have you tried to look for the same facts for yourself in other sources? But if you've arrived to the point where you disagree with how I choose to convey my thoughts, I challenge you to improve my line of thought to facilitate peace, harmony, respect and serenity on this planet, to start with. And I will gladly read your work or listen to your perspective. Note that if your means are unjust, I will not approve of it and if I could I would stop you from doing it. Being apathetic towards injustice is unjust on itself. If you choose to be unjust for your own benefit, life will seek revenge. If you decide to become rich from the misery of others, history will know you as a wretched person. If you decide to commit other atrocities, as you well know we will eventually find out. Now do a mental skip from what I've talked about before. Trade is equal, life is equal. Value is determined individually. But what about resolving conflict then? The an eye for an eye is a bit outdated. So as an intelligent being, I suggest we agree to be able to forgive. Forgiving is human, but often described as a divine feature. Yet we can forgive. Not that I mean to rewrite specific religions or rules that could apply based on your religion. Just that looking at the most equally traded disruption of injustice. An eye for an eye literally describes equal trade of justice. Being civilized, and not trained to follow, I believe an eye for an eye can be rewritten as something more modern like. Agree to compensate with what you have or with what you can do in your life to compensate the value. If this option is not possible, its equal will be returned to the owner. For example, theft versus fine or ticket or jail or whatever turns into theft versus equal material value or the stolen property. But, the retaliating demand may not exceed the initial value of the stolen property. Rules, nothing is worth more than life. Taking life is retaliated with as taking the murderer's free life, or their free will to decide on how they can live, in return. Not literally, that would be quite hypocrite. Truly, murder is robbing the ultimate freedom. And you should count yourself lucky if someone is even willing to forgive you. This task should be facilitated by governments. There isn't much we need to remove from our society to realize this. I think the missing pieces are us. We need to add to our society, and realize this. We have prisons, where prisoners make life miserable for each other. But we also have countries which lack prisoners, where prisons are closing down due to the lack of criminals. Are we really all so legal? Or does society fail to catch the real criminals? Do we even all realize what is legal? Do we agree on what is legal? Did you even ever read the law of where you live? Did anyone ever provide a copy of it to you? Is it written in such a way that you can easily grasp the meaning of it? If you see improvements otherwise, wouldn't you yourself be able to suggest them for review? Retaliation becomes something that should serve as the healing of a wound. A body which recovers its original functions, and leaves a mark that can remind you of what went wrong. Who knows retaliation eventually leads to the act of forgiving, if ever continuing a conflict. Waiting ever, for the one person to act out of love for the other. Waiting ever, for the conflict to stop. And yes, this goes for me, for you, for everyone able to comprehend this as humans do. And in retrospect on how I wrote this book, that outcome might also even be unlikely. But, and this is the point I am getting to. If you are proven to be purposely discrediting the system by being corrupt, being unjust with equal trade of freedom, eventually you will be met with and removed from power and influence. Life will do that. If you're lucky in your own time, that you are alive, so you can find retribution to keep coexisting peacefully. You rely on your own skill, your personality, your knowledge, your actions and decisions to do what is just in life. 
and accordingly, future life will be peaceful. We need to criticize and validate our sources, we need to embrace larger perspectives, we need to endure, we need to survive. If even one conflict remains among humans in the future, even one, we endanger our species. It is what we bring our attention to, the most important conflicts we think that are there. The problem we want to systematically change or improve or adopt or adapt or transmute or create. Because of our connections, and our growing global consciousness, the tiniest difference of meaning, the tiniest truth not shared, it leads to immense consequences for our existence. It hopefully will never come down to which color a dress is. But other differences in opinion have surely caused harm and suffering to our species. We need justice for all creatures, how unimportant they may seem. Nature has its own system of justice. Some of it we understand very well, and some of it we have no clue about. But even in nature, there is virtue in standing up for injustice, as defined in nature. Species other than humans are very aware of us humans and our impact. We might only ponder on nature, not realizing through our looking glass it watches us back. If you never lived with pets, or if you have not had the fortune of taking care of animals, it must be hard to grasp this. But truly, free will also exists in them. If we want to approach this universally for humans, what little effort would it be to include all creatures? How much of our actions will be more conscious? More in resonance with nature? More serving the justice of life? Oink oink. So concluding in repetition, standing up for injustice is just. The just things in life can never be harmful. The universe's retaliation will eventually take place, sometimes physical, sometimes social, sometimes historical, sometimes mental, sometimes financial. If you actively contribute to your society, you will be able to be forgiven. Based on free will you can obviously cooperate, so it is not a condition required on your social status. It is not based on how much debt you have. It is not based on how sick your daughter is. Life eventually hits you if you have wronged someone, and it has brought eternal shame to your name. Even if you like it or not, it won't change to the effects from your causation in the universal soup. And would you have peace with the damage you have caused to the universe, if it were solely to realize we are better off without it? The biggest lessons in your life you can and will have learned originate from failure. If you would be judged for each, by anyone, how would you add up? Perfection eventually also originates from failure. And even perfection itself, isn't it a mindset? A mental picture? Something ingraspable? Yet, adding an improvement can bring something closer to perfection. Is something perfect when it is destroyed? Is it truly complete when it stops existing? Whatever your concept is of perfection and success, it must be linked to failure. My advice to all humans. If we believe in ourselves like we would in some god, maybe we can create our own valued better place right here on earth. My point on this previous blah blah blah, everyone should be free, and society will bind itself on this free will. Taking free will away disrupts the core foundation of universal peace. Not only free will of beliefs, but also the free will of possession is in danger. For example, in the Netherlands now it is forbidden by law to tell other people to withdraw their money from the bank. Then, truly achieving it may look like an even more incredible task. Fear not, as you might be surprised by how good others can respond to your love and kindness and good intentions. By the way I am putting up this book for free, not because I am solely trying to convince you to think about realizing world peace. I am making a point that I do not care about money these days. I don't really care about its financial value for me. I am writing this for your freedom. Fellow human. I will spend my life defending my intentions in this book by staying in the peaceful line of thought that I live in today. As you must have heard somewhere else, ideas are bulletproof. And you're free to think about freedom. The only causes limiting humankind's freedom today, are the actions caused by themselves. 
The interpretation for you may seem cryptic, but that's why you really need to make sure you understand me. It is hard for me to exactly describe what I want to tell you. I am not much of a writer as you can notice. One thing I can tell you. You're human. HH pretty obvious. But it is probably the most obvious fact I can list right now. I strongly advise you to critically read my book. As much as I do appreciate your consent and affirmations, I also appreciate the search for truth. So if you find yourself disagreeing in some way with what I sketch, I appreciate your feedback very much. Though feedback is vulnerable to discussion, lies are not. I may have made wrong references or made untruthful references, I also appreciate your factual correction. For if you think I have concluded wrongly I urge you to contribute to the line of thought in an evaluated and truthful perspective. If it wasn't clear enough, it is hard for me to exactly describe how it should be. In fact I do not even claim to describe your world and reality or how it should be. I just analyze what I can observe and what my mind computes, ends up written in these lines. Though I am fully conscious about my mind being subjected to its own analysis, I find the use of a certain methodology strongly coherent with the methodology of chance calculation. By excluding one possibility it leaves the other but not necessarily disappears. Calculating the chance of one event weighs out to the millions of other chances that are variants of that event. And so, I believe, that discussing morals has to be seen as a similar process. Because chance involves the all, infinity, in its calculation. To conclude, there is no unarguable way to describe how to act. There is however an unarguable general common factor which is who should act. This correlates how. You're all humans reading and interpreting this book. Think of what you are. You're human just as I. Think as one. You wouldn't expect our pets to solve the problems we face, would you? There are no magical unicorns that are around lately to grant your wishes. We, humans, need to make the changes. What is the chance in today's world that there are some morals we can agree on with 99% of the world population? What is the chance in today's world that there are some morals we can agree on with 90%, 80%, 70% of our world population? There has to be a point on which we can at least have 50% of the world population agreeing on some sort of peaceful interaction. There are efforts in today's world, some small and some seem bigger. However they stumble against the same issue as I do. The common acknowledged values are being blinded by peers who want to keep you in their claimed true morals. It is not just one road that leads to Rome. It is the manner of many ways in which our sense of good and bad meet each other. And you only can view for yourself which are the good and which are the bad, through inspiration and experience. This is why education and parenthood are crucial for our further existence. More on our offspring, further down the book. You can only prefer the good because you have experienced the bad. And so others have experienced bad so they would want you to never experience that. And on that true testimony you can start discussing morals and values which are universal. Truth and harmony. No truth is the path to harmony. Why? Imagine a large scale with unbalanced values. When one side is ten and the other is one, by value they have trouble synchronizing. When an apple weighs a lot in the one hand, and a lemon in the other hand weighs less, it is hard to balance them on the scale if they are not having the same mass. Mass stands symbolically for understanding. Why? Because agreeing to disagree, don't mind I left out the quoting reference here, is the right balance we seek. It is a controlled conflict which we must discuss about. It is the duty of the human that disagrees with the other to communicate about their values. Who knows you might convince the other finally creating spiritual harmony between you two, three or eight or hundred or million. It is looking at the truthfulness of what is being given as input. And if you are not open to discussion concerning your own morals and values, 
you show that whatever your construction of mind is, it is not able to deal with other values and morals without breaking its peaceful nature. It is discussion that unlocks truths never shared before. For the only conflict that exists between man in its purest form originates from miscommunication. If you're looking for an example, just ask, really, and I mean really, really, really religious people. Like, really really religious. Imagine them to discuss by each of the different possible origins of their religion to discuss which religion follows the true prophet. They might also wonder about ancient predictions. They wonder on who the false prophet is, and blindly believe who the true prophet is. Often with consciously neglecting the origin of good of the other. One opinion fights the other. Heavy rivalry ravages their minds. Yet the core beliefs of good and love of all religions are nearly identical and forgotten. The differences are based upon opinions and personal values rather than physical facts. Being obligated to visit church does not make you a believer, or wearing a certain piece of clothing, or cutting a small piece of your wiener. Or, does it? It is choosing to believe, which gives you your core values. If you do this commitment, then ask yourself why would you choose to believe that which you could not evaluate? How can you choose core values, which are not evaluated and compared with morals and core values of others? Just as opinions, humans are numerous on earth, even getting a bit overpopulated in fact. How would you deal with that as a government? Knowing even the rich will get poor if money would be scarce. How would you relate to other countries facing the same issues? Some ideas can come to mind as to just kill the poor and unfortunate souls and get on with it. A useless war to crank up economy, while gaining new, free space, for your own people. A win, win situation. It is ridiculous to think of it, but hey I am one of those fuckers who just did. And I bet some other fucks on this planet do as well. Now I am most certainly not saying we should plan mass extinction. Or that I am considering aborting all newborn children once we reach 9 billion humans on Earth. In fact, I suggest a peaceful and intelligent alternative. Though if we do not collectively start thinking about solutions to these problems, the easiest option would become some enormous extinction of people as decided by others for you and not by you. We have to manage ourselves in the same manner we manage our lawn. Not too long, not too short. It is how you manage the amount of candies you put in a jar. Full is full unless you haven't used earth optimally. Form follows function, also in society. The government is nothing more than an apparatus of society. Making humans able to serve society based on free will is a task for the government. Inspiration is the base of creating society, not obligation. The government is responsible for making humans able to realize the mutual living environment for ourselves. We're so blessed to be human. Do you also realize that? We have the ability to develop, to create. We're not the dumb worker slaves that some stories claim to tell. For example the Sumerian tablets of the Amunaki. I am telling you, looking on a world scale we're as ready as we can ever be. We have developed more ways to communicate, we're aware of each other's differences. Truly society has developed into a preparatory stage for world peace, the only problem is the larger frame that sets our misery. Political and economical powers decide the misery of man. Did you know? The best things in life are for free. If you believe it, you're right. The best things in life cost money. If you believe it, you're right. What if everything would be free? And, we would consume out of need rather than greed. Hold up. This ain't right. Home. Ah. Uh, how can functional and personal value disappear from life? Is this reality? If you're asking more than you'll eventually need in trade, trade isn't equal and I believe it should be defined as unjust. Yet if someone offers you a greater value, based on free will, you're free to accept it. It is give and receive, not give and take. Taking something from someone not based on their will of you taking it leads to injustice. One way or another. 
That's why presents are true gifts. They are things we want to share with others in its functional or emotional purpose. Taking is bad. Taking a life, taking someone else's car without asking for permission, theft sort of. In short. Taking someone else's freedom to decide on free will. That's why you have to evaluate what you receive and balance it out towards others. I am not telling you materials are the things we should value. We should value its function and not its worth in gold or worth in dollars, euros, yuan, yen, or any other currency. Sharing values is something human yet some animals do this as well. That's how you not only share materially, but also spiritually. Now, the spiritual world is equal to the material world. Good has the same value to everyone because we define it ourselves. If you're good when nobody's freedom is taken away by your actions, decisions or agreements. And just because I like you and I also like this quote from Tolstoy I'll slap it down here as he phrases it so eloquently. The essence of all slavery consists in taking the product of another's labor by force. It is immaterial whether this force be founded upon ownership of the slave or ownership of the money that he must get to live. Money is a new form of slavery, and distinguishable from the old simply by the fact that it is impersonal, that there is no human relation between master and slave. Let this sink. Now life would exist of only good things. Impossible. Well, frankly my dear, nothing is impossible unless you disprove it from not being able to be, as we both don't know what we don't know that we don't know. Nothing doesn't exist. There is only stuff. Even the transparent gases floating around you are something. The basket isn't technically empty, even if you didn't put eggs in it. What we mean is that the basket is functionally empty, it is available for storage. Empty doesn't exist unless in its materialistically functional interpretation. Parts of our universe so small and invisible we have not puzzled out yet, the core minus and plus. Are the things that float around us. The air you breathe, the air in the basket. So in light of what we know is true, and what we don't know is true. Let us be honest. Let us share truth. Question the source. Question its logic. When we all know what we know, we also know what we don't know. In this sense, there can be harmony. As your reason, your ratio, will conquer your own doubts, your own unknowns. And you reasonably can't disagree with yourself unless you have reason to do so. Harmony. Cluck, Nois. Chapter 3. Yesterday's Money. I am probably stereotyped as a new age hippie. The talk a lot without action, the barking dog that never bites. That's a valid stereotype. For I have only written this book. I have created these thoughts. And all I do is share them with you. And even though the stereotype is true, I have no means in biting you. Yet I have lived in a different manner. I've thought a lot about progress and quality of life. The circumstances in which I have lived up until now. Do not lend the right environment for peace, harmony, respect and serenity. I am a slave to the monetary system. I work to live. I pay to live. I die with debt. What does a dead human owe you? His life. History has planted me in a system based on debt. Yet we are able to change the course of history. If one man changes something, nothing happens unless he's more powerful than the world combined. If the world but one man combined changes something, that one man has to face the entire world. I am happy that you're still reading. And I hope I resonate with you in the right way. For it means one step closer for me, to reach world peace. It means you understand where I am going with this. We've heard of the 99% thing. And technically, materialistically, it is true. Spiritually it is not. Money is what controls us. Money defines our happiness. Money is distributed unequally. Money is the only current option for trade. Multinational corporations and government are in control. There is no crisis. Only small companies die. 
Big super corporations decide what you eat, what you watch and what you should think. Therefore, disable it. Stop money. Start trading in equal values. One currency. Optional I would say, on condition we all can agree on its standard value in materials. Basic necessities to stay alive should be shared freely without required trade value. The reason we will work is when we need more convenience. What about energy? What about water? What about the garbage? What about guarding freedom? What about insert current governing issue here? Stop wondering about who will do that. We are the government. We are the government of the human race. No one rules us and we commonly decide what to do. That's the agreement for world peace. Agree to vote, agree to shape our world. Agree to share your ideas, agree to carry your ideas to others and look for evaluation of them. Agree to disagree, but do not retaliate false. If no freedom is taken from you, you should be good right. Contribute to society in the way you choose. In return you will receive its equal value based on your own decisions, actions and meaning to society. Getting one problem out of the way. There is much to explore on terms of generating energy efficiently. In fact I am convinced the current governments, multinational corporations are hiding it from us right now. Knowledge is power, and sharing it equally enforces the carriers of that knowledge to its potential benefits. The truth about free energy, wireless electricity, influencing the gravity field and many other scientific miracles, is hidden. I can tell you for a very good reason as well. Coming to realize the relationship between these gifts of nature, one could cause great harm to others with this knowledge. Therefore I encourage the waiting community to share their findings on free energy and new technology. The only condition for this sharing on the truth about free energy and technology, must be world peace. For conflict should not be solved by violence and remaining and reconciled conflict possibly leads to violence. Having this knowledge and technology, and not to forget free energy, could allow any person with bad intentions to cause great injustice on a large scale. World destruction in short. If you remember what happened with the atomic bomb, this should not be too hard to picture. The only way to get to this information, is to find your contribution to freedom and peace worldwide. If this doesn't exist, it would be dangerous to talk about this much power openly. You can think about the patents and scripts from Nikolai Tesla which have been classified by the United States government. Just to name a very famous example of hidden truth, to get you thinking about other benefits to mankind which are being kept hidden. Of course I do not say the motivation to keep this information hidden by the governments and corporations is not necessarily related to keeping us safe. I believe these secrets have been classified in order to prevent this knowledge from spreading out to enemies of the state. As the United States is a warmongering country by nature, I do understand their paranoia. The most things you cannot even conceive of, are hidden from you. Mostly for your own good, and others for you to suffer for. Therefore you have to realize that the only way to benefit from good hidden information, is to find your contribution to freedom and peace worldwide. We will be able to construct our own transparent society built on peace. In which we share the knowledge freely for the benefit of all. And hypothetically, if those so-called secrets do not exist at all, and the conspiracies are a farce, then the most beneficial climate for inventing this technology is best set in a world of peace. As we have known weapons of mass destruction before the atom bomb, it is undeniable that currently this is the most destructive weapon in our world. Yes, nuclear research has led to the creation of the atom bomb. Also this has led to an improved understanding of nature's elements which allows us to harvest nuclear energy. I am not saying this is a good manner of generating energy but the possibility itself is already a breakthrough. Also there are records such as the Tehran UFO incident of superior technology that we cannot fathom. And we can even not begin to reconstruct similar technology. 
Now imagine other technologies being funded by our own managed governments in a never-ending age of world peace. With unbiased research with universal conclusions allowing us to safely use this knowledge. Okay. Now forget everything for a moment. As you realize by now we are far off from that and have even more pressing issues to address. I can understand you're quite skeptical, and possibly even worse, you detest the idea of freedom and peace. Sleep on it. Wake up, and look in the eyes of the first human you encounter. Act warmly, kind and friendly. What will you receive? Let yourself know tomorrow morning. Chapter 4 We will build, I will build. I invite you to improve your world around you. As others do the same, you will live in an everlasting improving world. In any case build something, maybe in the literal sense, maybe not. Maybe as impactful as you would have wished it to be, maybe not. There is good in everyone willing to receive good. There is bad in everyone willing to receive bad. It's kinda like karma, for a spiritual comparison. Even cats and dogs know what's good and bad from their perspective. I am just saying. Communicate about your morals, respect and equally balance it out with the morals of other people. How can you be good to other people? Detect their needs, ask them about their needs. If you can't help it is okay, yet do not be greedy and overuse your own needs. Usage is different from ownership. An item that can be used without consuming it, can be borrowed. You can share usage if you can come to an agreement on its value. Even if you happen to destroy it by accident. All agreements are possible unless the trade is of equal value, based on free will. Chapter 5 Cutting the flock of evil with individual spiritual happiness. Hu you you it sounds so dramatic. Benefits of a constructive society, totally not evil. Well you can imagine those, can you? Moving on. Corrupt media. First of all I would like to elaborate on our current corporate media. The function, documented in various studies of media is, to be a watchguard of, by and for society. The watching investigators who have the right to query where truth lies. The guards of our society by showing large groups information. The mirror that reflects. The two sides of every coin. The entire framework that this rests on is enormously disfigured. It is an atrocity, a plague on our line of thought. Why don't media focus on what we can do to improve our world? Why do media always show what went wrong somewhere on our world? Why don't we see examples of how societies have made milestones? We do some have a few, but looking at what we can hear, see and read from current media. Please map out news for yourself and outweigh negative news with positive news. The reason why we read negative news, is because it makes more money. People want to see how others are doing, and an article about how well people are going along with each other is rather boring. At least that is how the largest media corporations in our world manage infotainment. Did you know that that there is even such a rule which states that the stories are front, second or third page stories depending on how many people died in a certain range? Or how long the message will last, etc. Of course there is also many other factors that determine the location of where you read the news or hear from it. And mostly a lot of what you read has been filtered through the New World Information and Communication Order, NICO. But just the mere fact that deaths per distance from where you live, is a factor which determines what you will read. Of course the guarding function is some true noble cause as well if you pursue it sincerely. In today's world, we have had many whistleblowers confessing the corruption in politics, corporations and media. As for one example which I can only provide in Portuguese currently from Prof. Dro. Ma Alcia Fatorali. Who explains what banks, and governments are up to. There is an absolute certainty that in today's world there are many classified agendas. If there would not be, how would you explain the predictability of our international conflicts? Are today's world leaders really so incompetent to not know what is going on? 
they just ignore the fact that their people is hungry. That their people is facing rape and other acts of violence. Atrocities right in the midst of our so-called societies. That their people uses weapons on each other. What has gone wrong that the focus of governments is to be able to retaliate rather than to be able to help their people. Those absurd budgets quote-unquote needed to repress criminals versus the budgets used for quote-unquote education. Let me tell you. Only facing the cause of criminality will dissolve it. If people do not see evil acts as their goals or means, they will not do so. And criminality will so far as possible be reduced to people breaking to their evil nature in small scales. Emotional murder, rape, violence rather than out of need for money. And trust me, criminality would already reduce a lot. The violence out of sheer necessity of basic human needs to survive can also not be justified only if you would compare it with violence out of greed. Just look at how much criminality is linked to money. If money would not be a need, why would people commit immoral acts to just have money? Yes some other greed can come in its place, but I am convinced the major cause of criminality is linked to money. You do realize we do not catch all criminals. There are lots of criminals who walk the streets free. And they repeat their criminal acts to fulfill their greed. The greed is the cause of the criminal acts, not the criminal act itself. A kill and loot robbery would not be caused by itself. Enough about this, think it out and ponder by yourself. This rant was caused by the absurdity of our media, there goes my main plot of this paragraph Sci. In conclusion, where are today's heroes? Our examples. Who is alive to inspire us morally? Let me read more of that shit. It would help. Imagine dramatic music. This is how a policeman in a gunfight knows the dangers. Feels a relative amount of fear depending on their built-up fighting experience. And overcomes his fears with courage and when he disables the enemy shooter one way or another. He brings the unarmed suspects to the justice system. Even if the suspect was forced to do this, doing so is just as guilty for it is an action by an individual. The collective exists of individuals. If many individuals rob freedom, they are all equally as guilty. And I do not want to jump into identity politics, by collective I do not mean to say that it needs to be an identifiable group per se. Depending on which infringement of freedom is committed, the trial of retribution will be as equal. The masterminds of evil, the leaders of the flock of damnation, will most certainly be the pure essence of evil in society. It is they who destroy the opportunities and freedoms of the collective victims. Literally scheming their plans for more profit, not caring for the suffering it causes. Don't be a victim. Claim your livelihood, safety and be transparent about how you want the world to change, how you want your government to change. If you encounter violence you cannot avoid, ask help from the government. It is the task of the government to provide substantial facilities for society to help educate their children. For it is a child who is truly innocent and holy. They experience the world spiritually. As today, we teach children to be human as human is described by your morals and values. If we teach children to be racist, the chance of them being racist is high. If we teach children to be not racist, the chance of them being racist is high. If we teach children to solve conflict through discussion and reason, the chance of them doing so will be high. If you inspire your children to follow the example of the auto-interdependent society, the chance of them contributing to it through time is high. If you inspire a child to achieve power through evil, they will be corrupted with evil. Setting the right example is the task of the parents, be the inspiration for collective life. Show the collective reward to your child, and inspire them to accelerate it. This is how humanity will finally reach its highest form of spiritual happiness. The one question that remains to me, is exactly which level of happiness can you continuously sustain? How can you generate a state of ecstasy without losing your sober mind? Is it possible for everyone to resonate in harmonious happiness? Talking about goals in life. 
this will be my ultimate goal. And when I stop being, I will die happy, for I have lived in the path towards it. Organized Society To face the problem of economy yet again. When we summarize our current global economy, the image describes divided parts of communism and capitalism. Yet globalization has caused both economical systems to adapt some features of the other. There are exceptions in the communist economy such as there are in the capitalist one. The largest mistake we make today is to be afraid to accept both. Now think of how I view global economy in a time of peace. Think of the government in the mixed free economy. I believe since I ever conceived of a concept of the government, that the task of the government concerning economy should be the following, the government ought to be designed to detect the need of the people who live with it. It serves as a seed, so that society can grow. Globally organizing human society would allow a lot of global issues to be addressed. Problems such as famines, plagues and other sorts of disease, global disasters, and accidents and of course all other types of destruction. Money would not be an issue, because the government satisfies the need of humanity. How would the government acquire money? A government should have reserves, as a shield or buffer. It provides and serves as a catalyst. With needs as the one value, it provides the necessary value to satisfy the need. In the case of famine, the government should invest in efficient, durable and healthy food production. Anyone should in that case be able to contact the government and propose a partnership. All the unemployed people that would like to work for the government could easily work in those newly created jobs. If there aren't enough entrepreneurs to partner with for the government, it should act on itself to initiate the right solution to the necessity. Any form of company can be government-owned. And yes, it can make a profit. We are the government, but the profit we earn, we should only use to provide for our needs. And so the people operating in our governments should immediately resign if our people decides they need to. For our voice should be reflected by the people we have put there by choice. And also, each and every party should be able to approve of laws and in fact more strongly I believe our democratic systems are currently flawed. As for if the top of our government is not formed upon each representative voice of society to decide of which laws should exist or not, the laws themselves can never be representing universal values. And so the government in a purely improved and genuine democracy should be able to make profit without profit then not being out of false necessity. And if the profit of the government exceeds the needs greatly, the profit should be put to use to reduce the costs of organized society. Realistically speaking in today's world, we have quite the opposite. We pretty much all live in debt. Even our governments. There is absolutely no way we can change this, unless we are prepared to change our agreements on value. Structural Improvement One way to change the world is to use destruction. Destruction however never leads to harmony. It is harmony of what exists that leads to harmonious change. This is how improvement can be structural. If that what is created is in harmony with everyone and everything. It is how we will live with our ecological environment as much as our spiritual and moral beliefs. For what exists today, will have started in harmony tomorrow. This will allow structural improvement. Managing our global government to provide for the needs and serve as a catalyst. The fairness and openness that emerges in peace, will lead to great accomplishments. One day, we will never have to worry, because we will be all in harmony. The future is something that is not important anymore. Because it is the cause of our own actions that determines the future. Action is the reaction even when approached from all sides. Basic. There will be no action without a preceding reaction. Now now, come on, you're not being completely honest here. There are peeps on this earth that are enormously unpredictable, you might be underestimating humans. The speed in which we can progress with world peace, is also unpredictable. All you can do, is be the factor in that progress, which determines the outcome. We work together like a mathematical equation. 
The answer is infinity, everything in the accumulated future of causes and effects. As we can also find other funny numbers to determine life around us, I am not implying we are living in the matrix. Nor that numbers should, or could, be the crack of existence. It might be, but I am not aware of it. But the point to be made here, is that we have to influence the equation like this. Imagine two armies, one evil army made of bad numbers and factors with another army on the other side which is good and peaceful. They influence each other and accumulate into a next number depending on the fluctuation of value of the factors. Let us say bad numbers are negative, and good numbers are positive. The goal is to end up with positive infinity. There are two options, either have enough positive numbers in your equation to outmatch the negative numbers, or use multiply the negative numbers so that they cancel themselves out and become good. That last option also requires the negative numbers to be switched up and changed in the equation. We know we want to reach positive infinity, which stands for structural improvement. The bad numbers, are the costs we spend to fulfill our needs globally. The good numbers, are our own contributions to the organized society. Destructive versus constructive organization. Let us look at the main differences between destruction and construction. Even though it is so basic, many people do not see the larger frame of destruction and construction. Knowing that destruction causes existence of matter to be deconstructed. It also destructs certain values and morals. Values and morals which were constructed to contribute and construct. Such as the good morals and values shared by the main religions which are destructed by each other. Knowing in their framework that we are all God's children, we fight each other in one huge cognitive dissonance. It would serve us better to build a framework which allows all religion to be shared freely. A framework in which religion has the positive influences dominating the negative. Even for non-religious people on this earth, it would be beneficial. Even if they choose to not believe in your God, or in any of the feats related to that God. Because the good intended actions by believers of your religions do make a constructive difference. Having the universal freedom of living next to one another, accepting the difference of morals and values in respect. Compensating and somehow trading and exchanging values constructs a universal mindset. One that cannot differ in some values because they have been universally accepted. It is one that is so naturally inclined by its nature, that we can never disagree with it. It will be so basic and essential for our free existence that we can never live one day without it. Knowing that freedom is so important, I believe we should construct the frame of freedom. A constructive and commonly shared perspective on life. There you have it. Discuss with yourself and others if you see how it is possible. If you say it is not possible, you would need infinite proof which disproves it from being able to be possible. Such as we can surely say that in theory nothing is impossible, in the practical world this also may be true. You may be familiar with the famous quote from Julius Caesar, if you want peace, prepare for war. And so I repeat it, if you want peace, prepare for war. But fight with words and let your arguments be your weapons. There is no reasoning to be found in a destructive society. It is discussion and reasoning which will allow us to build a constructive society. And I go as far as to say that only constructive mindset will allow us to develop the needed organization of universal free world peace. This is a collective effort which needs to start at the core and base shell of society. Only then all possible spectra of a peaceful society can develop and contribute meaningfully. Chapter 7 What you should look for My thoughts about free energy aren't just thoughts. I have strong conclusions from my own research that free energy and magnetic levitation are not too far away in our future. Others have demonstrated their knowledge on this already extensively, generating a controlled controversy in the academic communities. The big issue however. The scepter of power comes with the power to destruct. And all those war boys like destruction. It would be immoral to launch your scientific findings, knowing the world could be destroyed ten times over if it only went wrong in production. 
My mission in life will be to show every human that we are not incapable of good, we are just not used to doing it. We cannot learn from good, we learn from mistakes. I can tell that we've collectively made a lot of mistakes, let us learn from them shall we? I want to show you that we do learn from mistakes if we can observe them clearly. Now with great certainty, I can tell that we've collectively made a lot of mistakes. For example the tragedy described in Gieselskaft für Erdkunde, Valerine Menskin, Rolf Beckemeyer, Michael Friedel 1984. But there are many other horrible mistakes mankind has made, you can start naming all genocides here. Just to check, I'll flash some other words in your mind's eye right now. The Crusades and many other long wars such as recent ones. Nuclear power. Submarines. Pollution. Oil. Uranium industry. Gold industry. Diamond industry. Slavery. Overproduction. Overconsumption. Unequal trade. Inhumane trade. Okay you're still with me. Good. So the one problem, is the implication of world peace. How do we enroll this? We have so many law systems, and we have so many rules defining the way our world society is organized. This is grown from political history, but also in pragmatism. Humans are aware that some form of government is required for things to happen on larger scales. Scale follows the range of its purpose. If we want to operate on world scale, we will need to create universal laws or concepts. These laws cannot be intentionally and selectively written to do bad. All laws must serve good for humankind. I've thought of some base laws that would enable world peace if just each government would accept these rules. I say accept because it is up to you, fellow reader, to start pleading for these rules if you want them to apply. You will have to vote, you will have to step up to your current leader and tell him you want this. No one else will tell them this for you. Resonate with others and achieve harmony to serve the good for all. It is based on your own choice. Your choice to contribute. Your own voice, your own reasoning. Your thoughts are formed by yourself. Your actions are decided upon with your thoughts. And you are the bearer of the consequences of your own actions. As the Dalai Lama wisely said, when you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. But if you listen, you may learn something new. I most certainly spent a lot of time listening to what other people from the past, and present, want to share with me and everybody else. And now I speak my mind as if I could not share, the importance of your own perception of it, in any other way. This little list below, sums up laws I designed for our governments. To guide our systems to allow us to solve conflict without violence. I am not saying we must unite as one government. In the contrary I believe our governments should be agreeing with each other on certain points, rather than unifying under one roof. We need to agree to be different, but remain peaceful. Also quite contradictory you might say, I am not saying these should be the laws. I am just trying to inspire more intelligent people to formulate similar and improved universal laws which bind our governments as one for humanity. Your country must be ruled by its inhabitants by free will and choice. Morals and beliefs can never be a violation of law. Never contribute to war or violence, destroy your own weapons. Your government must be fully transparent to other governments. Forgiving is a legal option to solve conflict. This still allows the diverse societies as we have it today. I am not asking this question only for intelligent people. Anyone can be good, regardless their intelligence, IQ, as calculated as it is today, to look for the less intelligent and guide them. Act as a prophet of world peace and guide society into spiritual harmony. It is up to us to set the right example, because lately there have been so few around to set the example. I am not talking out of disbelief, I am talking about doing the right thing for our own race or kind or whatever you want to call it. Chapter 6 The Future and You Ha ha Tee hee Hoo 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 Ha 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 I switched up the chapters did you notice? 
Okay enough tomfoolery. So what about kids? Our future generation. What about you in a couple of years? How should we take care of peace? How do we transfer this universal concept through age? We might ever be able to achieve a higher state of immortality. I don't know. But either way, the base you build must support a lot. Educate your children in your main values. Show them how to be an individual, and guide them through inspiration. Not everyone is what you expect them to be. Give them the freedom to become themselves. Learn to love them for who they are. Bolster their goals in life for it is yours to prepare it for an everlasting improvement of being. By its choice it will contribute to society in its most spiritually happy way. All emotions are real, yet we are able to evaluate them. Regardless of what we ever felt emotionally. The ratio survives the chaos of the mind. Don't forget to take care of yourself and don't hesitate to plan the future carefully. There is no fool who has entertained reality in only one way. Realize that the universe is accumulating to something so more refined as what you can conceive. Eventually, if your heart and mind ride the wave of the future of society, you will have also achieved the most for yourself. One concept I live by personally comes from Bhakti Yoga. And I have experienced that the core concept works. For any advice I then have for you, try the concept. Even when considering its core rests on the love for God, it can also be found in any form of love. And that all your wisdom is acquired through the amount of love you have for the world, and by their logic then also God. And to be honest, for me it works, when I genuinely apply the concept. Love unlocks the world for you. How? Don't be afraid to combine your ratio and your emotions. As long as you do it from love. Learn to recognize your emotions, and ponder on your permanent intentions. Live with the intent you carry in you. And through love you will live through and know anything you want in your life. Through love you will learn to forgive. Through love you will learn the smallest details of any topic of conversation. Through love you will know others. Through love others will know you. And how will you know, if you never learn? And how will you learn if you never love? Does everybody love truth? I think everyone does except deceivers. And will you listen to someone you don't like? There is no best and there is no worst, and there is nothing in between. Love is how you will know and understand everything in that sentence. Did you know? It is very difficult to be the mother of a murderer or a rapist. It is very difficult to never be forgiven for your deeds. It is very difficult to know exactly what is going on in someone else's mind. It is very difficult to always find something you want to do. It is very difficult to be a victim to violence of any kind. It is very difficult, but through love you will still find the truths in your life that you often pondered upon. Don't be afraid to love, love is strength, love is wisdom, love is endurance, love is patience, love is, insert virtues. Now you've got the key, use it. Bless you all, and may you find spiritual happiness. Chapter 8 The chooser chooses what is known, the chapter with sources and boring lists. Okay so now I will list things that made me think what I think today, roughly. The lists are in no particular order unless it is by its composure ought to be listed that way. And sometimes I don't have the full names available, assuming that a Google search will probably get you where you need to be. If you have trouble here don't hesitate to comment for the source, source. Some things are here because I didn't mind copy-pasting them from my desktop. Other things are here because there are few other words in this book that make it close to complete. List 1, I call them artists but they are perhaps many things, perhaps all witnesses having some directions to truths worth sharing. Martin Heidegger, Paramhansa Yogananda, George Orwell, N. Tisler, Robert C. Solomon, Jostein Garda, Plato, Yes That Guy, Esren Kierkegaard, Milan Kundra, Friedrich Nietzsche, Charlie Chaplin, Albert Camus, George Lucas, Laosa, Mencius, Zaman Ali, Michael Tellinger, Randy Scots, Jonathan Wolfe, A. 
Einstein, Erasmus, Tolstoy, John Cleese, and the rest of them, Che. Peterson, Jean Paul Sartre, Patton Jaley. Oh boy, this list is far not done, but I am done editing for now. Thanks for the feedback so far. List 2 Concepts, Frameworks, Mental Tools, or Idealism to Benefit from. Try Wikipedia for these, ought to be enough to go through. Wikibooks. Org forward slash wiki forward slash introduction underscore to underscore philosophy. Wiki forward slash list underscore of underscore religions underscore and underscore spiritual underscore traditions. Wiki forward slash string underscore theory. Wiki forward slash false underscore necessity. Wiki forward slash mantra. Wiki forward slash Ubuntu underscore philosophy. Wiki forward slash the underscore matrix. Wiki forward slash the underscore city underscore of underscore the underscore sun. Wiki forward slash list underscore of underscore fallacies. Wiki forward slash Roberto underscore Mangabeira underscore under. Wiki forward slash flood underscore myth. Videos provided on www.worldpeacestartswithyou.wordpress.com. They live truth sunglasses. Illuminati hypersexualization of children exposed. Disney pedophilia and satanic role models. Illuminati the movie. The video media don't he want you to see. Voynich manuscript revealed, 2018. If you can get yourself interested in any of these, you'll learn a lot or have mental tools that can help you and others directly. Cooking, construction, math, methodology, logic, physics, chemistry, biology, history, geography, economy, strategy, computing. There's much more I could list, but eventually you will choose something that you love. And I can't list everything, wink wink. List 3, Hermetic Opening Principles, Hermes Trismagistus. Mentalism. All is mind, the universe is mental. Correspondence. As above, so below, as below, so above. Vibration. Nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. Polarity. Everything is dual, everything has poles, everything has its pair of opposites, like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree extremes meet, all truths are but half-truths, all paradoxes may be reconciled. R-Y-T-H-M-N. Everything flows out and in, everything has its tides, all things rise and fall, the pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the ring to the left, rhythm compensates. Causality. Every cause has its effect, every effect has its cause, everything happens according to law, chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. Gender. Gender is in everything, everything has its masculine and feminine principles, gender manifests on all planes. List 4, Common Opening Mantras, Janik. I maximize my experience as a physical being by embracing that earth life has to offer. I find joy in relating to others, and cherish all beings with whom I exchange my energy. Within me is a strong inner core that shines like a golden sun. I am perfect as I am. I dedicate my life force energy to healing and helping all beings I come into contact with. I embrace and radiate the energy of gentleness, romance and unconditional love for others. I grace everyone I meet with healing love energy. Deep within myself is a reservoir of untapped creativity that is uniquely my own. I bring it forth as my gift to the world. My voice is my vehicle for creating paradise in the world for myself and others. I align my mind with Earth's thought vibration. I am one in the matrix of universal thought. Absolutely anything is possible in this infinite matrix of universal life energy. I am divine. List 5, Custom Modern Prayer, Adapted Abrahamic. Father, Almighty Maker of all, I hope you accept this prayer. Hallowed be your name. Your holy kingdom will come. Thank you for our lives. Kindly nurture our body, soul and mind to serve you. 
I plead for forgiveness of everyone's sins. For I also forgive everyone who sins against us. Teach us to resist and conquer temptation for and from ourselves. Deliver us from evil or help us to deliver ourselves from it. We need knowledge on the heavenly and earthly gifts we have been given. Teach us to help each other to find you. Humans let us think. Humans let us see. Humans let us listen. Humans let us understand. Humans let us love. Humans let us share. Humans let us become. I thank you for your attention and consideration. I confirm the intent carried in my message, and I confirm to bear the consequences of my requests when answered. And as such this prayer is concluded it will be. List 6, Classical Red Line, Abrahamic, Sins, Virtues, Commandments. The Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself any idol, nor bow down to it or worship it. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. You shall remember and keep the Sabbath day holy. Respect your father and mother. You must not commit murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not give false evidence against your neighbor. You must not be envious of your neighbor's goods. You shall not be envious of his house nor his wife, nor anything that belongs to your neighbor. Seven Deadly Sins Lust Gluttony Greed Sloth Wrath Envy Pride Seven Virtues Chastity Temperance Charity Diligence Patience Kindness Humility List 7, List of Lost Gospels, oh wait, this isn't a list it is a link. HTTPS colon double forward slash archive. Org forward slash details forward slash lost books of the Bible. List 8, links linking to stuff about media. HTTP colon double forward slash RT. Com forward slash news forward slash 218243 under reported stories media mystery forward slash. HTTP colon double forward slash EN. Wikipedia. Org forward slash wiki forward slash new underscore world underscore information underscore and underscore communication underscore order. HTTP colon double forward slash www. TED. Com forward slash talks forward slash Ethan underscore Zuckerman. HTTP colon double forward slash www. TED. Com forward slash talks forward slash Alisa underscore Miller underscore shares underscore the underscore news underscore about underscore the underscore news. HTTP colon double forward slash www. TED. Com forward slash talks forward slash Sasa underscore Vusiak underscore invests underscore in underscore free underscore press. 9. Whistleblowers. Divider Publica, or Armento e Gastus. YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals Kmifkdfsu. Final list 10, stuff on corruption and other stuff that I moved here for the cleaned up version. HTTPS colon double forward slash www. Sum yum. Us forward slash philosophy forward slash pattern jaily forward slash Johnston forward slash HTTP colon double forward slash WWW Economist Com forward slash news forward slash leaders forward slash 2158809 Scientific research has changed world now it needs change itself how science goes wrong FSRC equals SCN forward slash TW forward slash T forward slash pay forward slash ed forward slash Wenshinsko is wrong. HTTP colon double forward slash WWW. Enterprise emission. Com forward slash warming. HTM. YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash WWW. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals I3MX0YRRJM. 
YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals LKTMMD7 YND8. They live truth sunglasses. YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals SG Adixoge. YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals MNMSHZ7 LQQM. Illuminati hypersexualization of children exposed. Disney pedophilia and satanic role models. YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals Dutch CE4. Killuminati the movie. YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals 6V00J2J2GI. The video media Don T want you to see. YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals JGX three C B three N N B Y. YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals QRDS five MFJQ. YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals Xopays. HTTP colon double forward slash rational wiki. Org forward slash wiki forward slash new underscore world underscore order. 12 Why Our Girl Discovers All You. S. Presidents, except one, related to one British king. YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals 9 oikmch katsi. HTTP colon double forward slash www. D states child meter. NL forward slash HTTP forward slash forward slash www. Auditory assay dada. Org. BR forward slash HTTP forward slash forward slash langolveropa. NL forward slash 2014 forward slash 12 forward slash Iceland Bankiers de Selene N Burgers in Bailout forward slash HTTP forward slash forward slash www. Washington's blog. Com forward slash 2012 forward slash 08 forward slash top economists Iceland did it right, everyone else is doing it wrong. HTML HTTP forward slash forward slash www. Index Monday. Com forward slash Ecuador forward slash public underscore debt. HTML HTTP forward slash forward slash www. Bloomberg. Com forward slash news forward slash 2014 06 17 forward slash Ecuador plans bond market return today five years after default. HTML HTTP forward slash forward slash en. Wikipedia. Org forward slash wiki forward slash foreign underscore policy underscore of underscore afil underscore career forward slash forward slash www. User toady. Com forward slash story forward slash money forward slash business forward slash 2014 forward slash 07 forward slash 31 forward slash countries near bankruptcy forward slash 13435097 forward slash HTTP colon double forward slash drone wars. Net forward slash about drone forward slash. HTTP colon double forward slash www. Transparency. Org forward slash country forward slash forward slash www. HRW. Org forward slash world report forward slash 2014 HTTP forward slash forward slash www. Amnesty. Org forward slash en forward slash human rights.
http colon double forward slash www rich sova hate nl forward slash nieus forward slash 2010 forward slash 12 forward slash 23 forward slash opro eptot bank run straf bar percent 5 b 2 percent 5 d html youtube https colon double forward slash www youtube com forward slash watch v equals mount bz1 roy qr8 http colon double forward slash en wikipedia org forward slash wiki forward slash smithsonian underscore institution youtube https colon double forward slash www youtube com forward slash watch v equals dlljsk underscore bzc YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals BQ by U forty five one EY. YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals UCU seven it eight one GH eight. YouTube HTTPS colon double forward slash www. YouTube. Com forward slash watch. V equals RC2 dual P9U.